Hey kids, welcome to unit two, lesson eight, mutator methods, exercise number two. We have an investigate and modify. Let's jump into the lesson and see what we have to do. Run the program to observe what it does. Then make the following changes to the program. Run the program after each change to observe what it does. Run the program and enter a negative number for the price. What happens? Does this make sense? In close.java, change the set price to check if the new price is a valid number. If new price is greater than zero, then update the price. And they give us a little example how to do that. Then we're going to go to modify close method in close Java. Use the scanner class to obtain input from the user. Well, that's pretty neat, kids. That's our old friend, the scanner class. It uses the show option method to show the available options to the user. We'll run the program and enter value what is not one of the choices, like three. What happens? What could you add to the modify close method to tell the user their choice was invalid? Try adding an if statement at the beginning of the while loop to check if the choice is greater than two. Print a message that their choice is invalid if this is true. Let's look at the code real quick. Looks like we're instantiating a new object, my close. It is of the close subclass here. We are printing off two things from the my close object, the get size method and price. Looks like that's getting the size and price. Printing off some dashes. And then under the my close, we are calling the modify close method. Printing off some dash lines. Then again, looks like we're printing off the get size, get price method from the my close object. Haven't seen this line before. We'll have to look for that when we go into the close subclass. We're importing our scanner. Our class is called close. It has two private instance variables. The first is a string size and the next is a double price. Our no argument or default is going to be small in 1099. Our parameterized takes two arguments, new size, new price, and that's setting that to size and price. We have a get method. It is getting size when we call the get size method. We call get price, it gets the price. We have our mutator or set method right here. Its method name is set size. It takes one argument, it's a string, and the parameter is going to be new size. And what that does is make size from above equal to the new size. And again, I want you to notice our get returns something. Our set doesn't, so it's a void. Looks like we have another mutator or set method. This one is called set price. It's taking a double. Its parameter is new price. And that's setting price equal to the new price. So these two are ways to modify our private instance variable from above. Looks like we have a print method here. Whenever we call show options, we're printing, what do you want to modify? And enter one for size, two for price, zero to quit. We have a new method here. That's at modify close. I was curious about. It's a void, so it doesn't return. Looks like we're creating a new scanner object. Remember, it's of the scanner class. It has a name of input. It is a new scanner. It has one parameter. And system in is just a keyboard input. We go to show options. And show options is just this print statement here. So we should get in our console this to print off. We're making a new variable here. It's a integer, it's called choice. And it is calling input from above. 
and the next integer. So this variable choice is just storing the integer that we're inputting. And then we're going to go to the next line. We have a while statement here. As long as the choice isn't zero, if the choice is one, we're going to print off enter a new size. And that's creating a new variable size, which is a string. And that's going to be equal to whatever the user is inputting. Then we're calling set size, our mutator method from above here, and we're changing it to whatever they enter from above. If the user equals two, then we're going to print off enter a new price. We're creating a new variable price. It's a double and it's whatever the user inputs. And then we're using that accessor method again for price to change the price. We go back to show options, which is again, this print statement right here. And we look for choice, which is our variable that we created right here. And then we close our scanner class. And if it looks like we hit zero, we'll close out of our scanner. Going back to one, enter a negative number for the price. What will happen? Well, it doesn't look like anything's gonna happen. I think the price will just print off negative and we should be fine. Let's run the program and see. Price right now is 10.99. Again, there is our default value. We're going to change the price, so we're going to call that method here to do that. That's two. Enter the new price. Let's go negative 9.99. And I think that's good, so we're going to exit out. Remember, zero will exit us out. And we got negative 9.99 because all we're doing is just changing the value there. So that makes sense to me. We took the value 1099 and we just entered a new one and that's now a negative number. Well, kids, we don't wanna set a price to a negative number. If we're really running a closed store here, if a customer came to ring out and this ring up is a negative number, we owe them the clothes and the money. So we wanna check our code to make sure we're ending a valid number. And I think that's what number two does. So in close.java, let's change the set price to check if the new price is a valid number. If new price is greater than zero, then update the price. If not, we're not gonna do it. Well, that makes sense. Let's go to close. In close, we're gonna go find the set price method. Here is the set price method. And all we're gonna do is just add this if statement right here. I'm going to come down. I'm going to say if new price is greater than zero dollars. Remember, we need our curly cues because this has to be inside. We want to update the price to be whatever the new price is. And if it is, we're going to set price to price. Let's look down here. Now we have two new prices and we have a curly Q problem here. How about we delete this one curly Q? We don't need to set the price. And if we're outside the scope, well, if it's negative, we'll set the price anyway. So that won't help us. Let's go ahead and delete our old statement. Now, it will only set the new price as long as it's greater than zero. Let's check and see if this is true. Whoop, we need another curly Q kids. Let's run and see if this is right now. We're going to change the price and new price is going to be negative 9.99. Exit out, zero price stayed the same.
pretty neat little error checking there built into the method. The modify close method in close Java uses the scanner class to obtain an input from the user. It uses the show options method to show the available option to the users. Run the program and enter a value that is not one of the choices like three. What happens? Let's run our program. Before I hit three, what do I think is going to happen? Well, down here, we have as long as it's not zero, it's just going to run this method. And this method includes hit the show option method call. I think we're just going to get this to print again. Let's see if I'm right. Yep. Doesn't matter the number. As long as it's not one or two, it's going to give that print statement. Well, could we add to the method modify close to tell the user their choice was invalid? We can try adding an if statement at the beginning of the while loop to check if the choice is greater than two. If it is, we can print a message that their choice is invalid if this is true. That means we're going to add it right at the beginning of the while loop. We're going to come down here. Give us a little room here, tab over, we're writing an if statement. We know it goes if we need parentheses. Oh, project timed out on us. We need our parentheses. And inside the parentheses, we need to check for something. And they're saying if the choice is greater than two. We already have a variable getting choice. We can reuse that variable because that's what the user is using to input. So if the user's input or choice is greater than, and we need the greater than sign there, two, what do we want to happen? We need some curly cues. And under this one, we're just going to say it's a invalid choice. So we're going to go system.out.print. Don't forget your semicolon. This is not a valid choice. Enter a number two or three. And that should be it. Now, if the user inputs anything greater than two, we should get this. If we get a negative number, we'd still get our loop. But that's out of the scope of this exercise. Let's hit run and see if this works. Let's enter eight. Well, I think we should definitely use a print ln statement here. Let's put ln. And then maybe a space as well, because I think Giving this a little distinction would be helpful. So let's do a system.out.println. Let's just do a blank statement in our semicolon. Stop and run again. Let's hit a number four. And we get our, this is not a valid choice. Print off one, two, three. We should have put zero because zero takes us out and prints the statement. Again, a neat way to use our methods to make sure that our users are not using the code in a way we don't intend them to do. Key takeaway lessons, kids, is how we can further use this mutator method to help with our code. In this exercise, instead of setting a variable to a new value, we used our if statements to make sure it's a correct selection before we updated them. In future exercises, I think we're really gonna look into this anatomy of this mutator method. Hopefully, 
this video helped you understand mutator methods a little more and how we can use them with other skills we've already learned. As always, kids, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next lesson. See you later, kids. Bye. Bye.